I've heard a good deal of discussion lately around intelligent transportation systems. So to start our conversation, I was hoping you could just sort of tell me what that term encapsulates and, and what's the vision for intelligent transportation systems? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question, Sean. So intelligent transportation systems means that, you know, you want to design your transport system in a way that um, is frankly intelligent by making it communicate between different components of the system, right? So, and that's where the V2X picture comes in, that you want a vehicle to communicate with another vehicle, you want a vehicle to communicate with a traffic light or roadside unit, and even a vehicle talking to a pedestrian. Once they're able to communicate with each, each other and connect it to each other, then you'll have a system which is way more efficient. It, heads, uh, it moves us towards a system where there are basically zero accidents, and. Uh, um, and more fuel efficient, basically. So I think that's the vision that we are going towards, basically. Yeah. And in some of the, the presentations and demos we saw today around 5G V to X, uh, SideLink came up. So for the benefit of our audience, maybe you could tell us what SideLink is and, and tell us why it's important for the development of uh, CV2X. Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. So, so SideLink is uh, basically device-to-device -device communication. So it's direct communication between Phones. So traditionally, uh, when you design cellular systems, uh, what happens is that a phone or a device will connect directly to a base station or a G node B, and the G node B talks back to the uh, uh, the phone or the device, basically. Okay. Um, however, um, for V two X, um, you want a vehicle or device to communicate to another device, so a vehicle communicating another vehicle or pedestrian and so on, right? And uh, essentially what we want to make sure is that that communication happens all the time. You know, uh, and it should be sort of independent of the coverage because you're designing these for safety purposes. So what this means is that you need a direct communication between devices or peer-to-peer -peer or device-to-device -device communication, and that is what is side link. Um, and for V2X, it's very specific because you, know, um, you want to design a system basically which works in a distributed manner. There's no network to control it. You don't even have a SIM card, and there's a dedicated spectrum at 5.9 gigahertz for it. So you can think of it as that we are designing a completely new network that works in a self-organizing, distributed manner, independent of like you know a coverage system, basically. And once you have designed this, which is what we did for YG V2X, and you know it's robust enough that it can be used for safety purposes, even though it's a distributed system. Now we have something that can be leveraged by other applications beyond. B2X for side links. So when we think of this vision of intelligent transportation systems, obviously the 5G network has to be built out by operators around the world, but who are the other stakeholders uh, that are in engaged in collaboratively working together to make this vision reality? Yeah, th uh, that's a very good question. I mean, uh, we are dealing with this new vertical of auto. Typically, you know, the cellular ecosystem does not yeah, deal with, uh, you know, with auto in a, such a direct manner as, as V2X, because you know V2X is specifically designed for the auto ecosystem. And once you start thinking about that, you know the stakeholders are quite different. For example, of course the automakers are the stakeholders. Um, they're the road operators who operate your traffic lights and who operate your RSUs, uh, or you know, they are a different entity who are involved. We also have the government regulators involved in terms of spectrum allocation, for example. So um, um, it's a different set of folks who are involved, who are, you know, who you have to work with to commercialize this technology system. So if you look down the road three to five years, how do you see 5G V2X changing the way that, that we interact with vehicles? And how do you see it uh, really changing the way that, that Qualcomm works with uh, automotive OEMs and other stakeholders? So what you can see in the future is that you know a car that is completely connected is talking to a car which is right next to you, and it's sharing information, for example, whatever it's sensing, and sharing it with the world that is around you. So for example, I'm driving, and my camera on my car observes something. It'll share that data with something that, let's say, a car behind. And so that the other car knows that if something is coming up, you know, it can sort of avoid that obstacle which is there, for example, child crossing or something like that, basically. So that's one vision. Another vision is you could have a scenario where, you know, um, let's say there's an autonomous car and you have like, you know, it's driving through an area with, with something like, you know, um, a repair work is going on or something like that. So V2 is the, so the repair company can put up an RSU which is saying that, okay, you, this is your new route 
and the autonomous car can update its new route based on whatever is being sent in and out, basically. So once you connect all the different components of the uh, transportation ecosystem, there are like a lot of possibilities. Well, it's really exciting to uh, hear about all the work that you're doing in the automotive area, and I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. Sure. Thank you for uh, this uh, opportunity, and I would appreciate the audience uh, if they can view the videos that are there for, for my demos, basically. Yeah. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Sir.